welcome to the Boston Roll channel. If you want to support my daily Eternal Magic offerings while getting amazing perks like the Boston Roll Discord community, have me play your deck on the channel, or list inside more guides before tournaments, check out the Patreon or YouTube membership program. This channel is possible because of these amazing sponsors. Check them out, all their links are in the video description. As always, thanks for being here. Let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today I'm playing Legacy, and at the request of Patreon subscriber King of the Depths, I have combined the old with the new. This is Up the Beanstalk Shark Typhoon. This list just kind of jams one of my old favorites, a channel staple, Shark Typhoon plus Hall of Heliod's Generosity. One in a white, put target enchantment from your graveyard on top of your library. One blue X, cycle this, make a, an XX shark, draw a card. This is a pretty dominating end game on any kind of stable board where you can cycle Shark Typhoon every single turn, making more sharks. And you do actually net cards because you go plus one card here, even though you're replacing your draw step every turn with Shark Typhoon. That's a sick end game. And then, of course, Up the Beanstalk is a card that is in most legacy control decks these days. Draw a card whenever you cast something with mana value 5 or greater, which would also happen to include Leyline Binding, which costs 1 most of the time. If I were to have a Shark Typhoon around, it would make a 6-6. Six, six. It would also draw a card from Up the Beanstalk. If I ever cast a Shark Typhoon, it would trigger Up the Beanstalk. And then we have some other fun enchantment stuff going on because Hall of Heliod's Generosity can be an engine in multiple ways. We've got a Pernicious Deed in the main deck. X, sack this, destroy each artifact creature and enchantment with mana value X or less. Just get them all out and loop that with Hall of Heliod. That could lock some decks out of the, the game. Dress down, you can loop that one and still draw a card every turn if that becomes relevant. And I put a spicy fun of replenish in the deck. Return all enchantments from your graveyard to the battlefield. Everything that's died, everything you've milled with loam, everything you've cycled, bang, it's back. And then... Your Shark Typhoon, you made a 2-2 flying, drew a card at some point, now this permanent is just here. Leyline Binding gets you the 6-6, six, etc, six, etc. Cetera, et cetera. And all that is just tucked into a nice little Swords to Plowshares, Brainstorm, Force of Will Shell, you know, like I like to play. There's a lot going on here, but it is ultimately pretty simple. We're just going to try to get insane control of the game with our ridiculous permanents, and hopefully they draw more cards than the opponent can keep up with. Let's do it. This is King of the Decks Shark Beans. I'm on the play in round one. I'm going to keep this hand. I don't like the lack of interaction in it, but I do like that it has a loam. I can outmuscle a wasteland, teeds a sweeper if we get into the mid game. If they're combo, I'm dead, but I say that a lot on this channel. And I'm still willing to keep the hands. I'll start with the Heath and pass. I don't really plan to cycle this Lorien Revealed unless something weird happens, because Life from the Loam is plenty of lands. I'd rather have a Lorien Revealed if we get into a Loam game. Lotus Petal. That's a good sign for my if their combo I'm dead statement from before. Okay, I can fetch, fetch, put two lands in my hand. I'd have to discard one of them anyway. Is that even true? Play this down to six. Six, seven. You know, I would end up with seven cards. It's fine. Math is challenging for me. Basic counting. Not my strong suit. I'm going to get the old Bayou Tundra perfect mana base. And hope that my opponent with their Lotus Petal Go is afraid to go off. If I could play Pernicious Deed and kill some Lotus Petals, that would be really funny. They found a land. Unlucky for me. This looks like the Epic Storm to me. Oh, for sure not that. Voltaic Key. Mox Opal. Well, this Pernicious Deed is kind of a heater, I'm not going to lie. I wish I could get it up to 1, but 0 is just fine. I need a green or black. The only fetchable black in the deck is Xander's Lounge, so I'm going to get Tropical Island here. Pernicious Deed for 0. Well, this happens in steps. Announce Pernicious Deed, and then once it resolves, I'll pop it for 0. Get him out. Cool. That was fun. I don't know if it was good, but it was fun. I'd love a Shark Typhoon. This Replenish in my hand can get back Pernicious Deed, which is also insane against Urza Saga. Oh, baby. We're a monolith. Looks like they're starting to make their move. After missing their turn one land drop, they've just gone land, land, monolith key. I can definitely die here. 
a one ring. Boy, do I hate that. Wish I had a counter spell. I can draw Leyline Binding. I'm not going to dredge. Well, dredging Loam's kind of interesting because if I. That gives me three looks at Leyline Binding or Shark Typhoon. And then I actually get to do stuff. I think that's worse than just card draw in my deck. Immediately rewarded with the Force of Will that I needed last turn. All good. All good. No hard feelings. Okay, I have Force Blue card. And next turn I can replenish and then pop Deed for one. Which will kill Urza Saga, anything that came out of it, and all the keys. The trick is being alive at that point. Which I can't guarantee right now. And I think I do have to dredge Loam. Just try to spike some additional insanity. Blood Stain Mire. And they can't just activate the ring three times this turn with their keys. They can ignore Grim Monolith and just go insane over there. Right of Flame. Yuck. Their key is untapping the ring. Draw three. They could still draw another four. That I can see so far. And they're going for it. Eleven cards in hand. What could go wrong here? And even if I do deed away most of their permanents, they could still just draw five next turn. Another Rite of Flame. If their payout is empty the Warrens, I'm actually pretty hyped on the situation. Burning Wish. Okay. Please grab an empty. Don't get a Thoughtseize. They also force-checked me last turn with the One Ring, and I failed the force check and then drew force. So they could be playing like I don't have force. They got Thoughtseize. Do they have mana for this now? Or are they setting up next turn? Another Burning Wish. Okay. Grabbing Consigned to Oblivion. Interesting. All right. Consigned to Oblivion does bounce target non-land permanent. Fly inside diamond. Yeah, run it out. You got any other permanents you want to put into play? I'm going to fetch in the end step. I'm going to get Xander's Lounge. And then I am going to dredge Loam and try to get the biggest payday possible with this replenish. If I hit even one other thing, like an up the beanstalk, it's worth it. Dredge Loam, hit Shark Typhoon. Okay, okay, folks. Let's make a game out of this. Savannah, replenish. Get all my enchantments back, which is two, but they're both pretty good. Unfortunately, opponent has Thoughtseize, and I know they have Thoughtseize. Deed for one, which kills the LED and the keys and the Urza Saga. Okay, here we go. Good chance I'm just dead anyway, but... If I force this Thoughtseize, I get a 5-5, five, five, if they can even cast the Thoughtseize. But drawing 5, I imagine they'll find a Black Source somewhere. They found a Black Source. This is criminal. And the Consign to Oblivion can just bounce my Shark token. Maybe they'll consign the Shark Typhoon first. But why would you ever do that? That doesn't make any sense. I hope they do, though. That would be sick. Oh yeah, got him on the hook. I'm going to force that to keep my Shark Typhoon. I know they can Thoughtseize me anyway. Even if they Veil of Summer here, I still get a 5-5, which was the important part. And if I can Bash for 5, then I can cycle Shark Typhoon. It's better being cycled than it is in play most of the time. Attack you for 5, you take 5 from your ring. Okay, I mean, they're going to clean up. I can Mystic Sanctuary Force of Will to my hand and draw a card with Shark Typhoon. Oh, I could draw a card with Beanstalk too. Is this actually helpful though? Green, green. Oh, I can burrow, put Force of Will on top, and play up the Beanstalk. That's a lot of good stuff. Okay. I do have blue, green, green. I just want to make sure I have triple green and blue, blue, green, green. I believe I have all of it. Mystic Sanctuary, target Force of Will, burrow, blue, blue, green, green. Force blue card in my hand. I get to play Volcanic Island. Then up the Beanstalk draws a card. And it'll draw another card when I force. I put them to functionally three life right now. Which is unfortunately not two life because there is a Thoughtseize in their hand. Oh, uh, this is... I did not think this was going to be a game, but it is. Okay, they're drawing six. They got 14 cards in hand. If they can't win from here, that's pretty embarrassing. Not going to lie. And I think I should actually let Thoughtseize resolve. And then I can brainstorm for a replacement force, because I have force blue card. And if they go to one, that's cool. Okay. They appear to be more likely to Veil of Summer here if they're not leading on Thoughtseize. Dark Ritual, Opal, Rite of Flame, Grim Monolith. 
Still nine cards in hand, by the way. Oh, they discarded the Thoughtseize to hand size. Never mind. They don't even have Thoughtseize anymore. A lot of mana leaving the pool. I wonder if they're peer into the Abyss. Paradox Engine. Yikes. That's not a card I can beat. Well, better force it. Pitching Shark Typhoon, which will trigger a card draw. If they avail a summer over top, I have to brainstorm and hope that there's Force Blue card both on top of my deck. Here we go. Oh, so close. Shattered. Heartbroken. Bail happens. Beanstalk draws a card that I already know is not blue and also Veil resolved anyway. So now I'm just f 6 and seeing what their deck does. This was a weird game made entirely possible by Pernicious Deed. There's 22 cards in their deck. There is now 15 cards in the deck. If they tap, they can tap the ring one more time without decking. Running Wish. Okay, this is probably lethal. Sucks, because if I found a white card, I could exile my Uro and go to 22. I guess that's exactly the storm they have. Never mind. I'm at 16. Okay, they drew up to... Down to seven cards in their library. And there's the Tendrils. Okay. They found the line through the Double Pernicious Deed. Wall of Hate. Okay, now my actual sideboard comes in. A Damping Sphere, Lavinia, Deafening Silence, Narset, all look good here. Veil of Summer is relevant. We saw Thoughtseize and Tendrils of Agony. We saw Saga, which means Dress Down has text. I'm not super hyped on Solitude. Or Solitude is better than Swords to Plowshares, because Swords to Plowshares doesn't attack for three if there's no creatures. That, a Leyline Binding would have actually stabilized that game if I had been able to remove the ring, I think literally on any turn of the game. I'm okay. This is not really a Loam matchup, even though Loam did do some cool stuff. That game, it's not what I want to be doing. And the matchup's kind of slow for up the Beanstalk, and I'd rather have Dress Down to make sure I don't get Saga'd out. Let's do it. No hate cards, no forces. I do have Binding and Beanstalk. I'm going to Mulligan. I actually do think this hand is a lot better than the other one for the ability to just see more cards quickly. Even though it still doesn't have the answers in it, it can find them better. I'm going to bottom Hall of Heliod and ponder off Tundra on turn one. And hope to find a hate card, which I will stack on top of my deck to hide from Thoughtseize for a turn. Opponents on six. Here's my ponder. Show me the goods. Powerful sideboard card. Lots of them. More cantrips. This is not what I want. I'm going to shuffle this. Into a solitude. Perfect. Just what I wanted. I have high hopes that there is a Damping Sphere on top of my deck, or a Lavinia. Thoughtseize, this is why I didn't chase a crazy mulligan, because they're a discard deck. You mull to five to find a hate piece, they Thoughtseize it anyway, then you're on four without a hate piece. Just keep stable hands, it's fine. And if they could turn one me through with a Thoughtseize, then they deserve it. Good job, you win. Brainstorm. Lavinia is here, but not till next turn. I think I'm going to put back... Solitude Lavinia, then play Windswept Teeth. I don't want to fetch away the Lavinia, but I don't want them to know that I don't want to fetch away the Lavinia either. Okay, they're just passing the turn. Veil of Summer does beat Lavinia because her words are counter. Well, she has two words on her. One of them is counter. The other is can't play. But they actually can't play a Grim Monolith right now, even if they ritual into it. I have white. I need blue. They could play Veil of Summer off their one land and then any number of zeros, though. Oh, I have blue and white. I could get a white land or a blue land here to play Lavinia. Do I think double green or double blue is more important? I'm holding a double white card. I'm holding two blue cards. I think double blue is more important. Lavinia. She's in. An opponent did miss a land drop last turn. They Veil in response. They're just trying to cantrip while they can. Find that second land because they realize they're not going to be able to play without it. Like I said, though, they could Veil and then dump out a bunch of zeros. Found the land somewhere between their cantrip and draw step. Burning Wish, probably for an answer to Lavinia, would be my guess. Consigned to Oblivion, confirmed. It would be a great turn to draw Veil of Summer. Deafening Silence, get wrecked. Okay, Brainstorm. I could still find Veil of Summer also. <laughs> oh. Yeah, when an opponent rewatches this later, they're going to realize what a bad time this is. Oh, I can't actually play both of these cards, though. Bummer. Because Deafening Silence, I had to brainstorm, which would turn off Damping Sphere. And Damping Sphere, I've already cast two spells this turn for D-Silence. 
I actually have to pick which one I want. That's stupid. Okay. I guess if I play Silence, I can hold up a Seiju, which might matter. If I play Damping Sphere, I have more mana to... Oh, I have Lavinia. I can hold up a Seiju anyway. Yeah, Damping Sphere gives me more mana to cycle Shark Typhoon with next turn. I love Damping Sphere in Legacy right now, by the way. This card just hits the combo decks in a way that they're not quite ready to deal with, because it doesn't say counter. You actually just can't even cast spells. This is the best thing versus Mississippi River. And because you're a control deck and you care about Cloud Post, it's not that popular, but it's a horrible matchup. You just get that too. I wonder... Oh no, Paseju. I was about to say I wonder if they even play a basic land, but this is not Assassin's Trophy. It's Paseju. Don't go after lands thinking they can't tutor one, because they can. I'm sure there's another duel in the deck. Consigned to Oblivion is an instant, or consigned is an instant, Oblivion's not. I'll play Baseju and attack, then I'll play Deafening Silence and continue getting my hooks in. And I can still add a 2-2 to the board and draw the Solitude, then I draw a fresh card out from under it. Yeah, too much there. I came to game. They did show me a bunch of Burning Wishes and Rite of Flames. Hydroblast might have some... Additional action if there's cards I don't like still in the deck. And these Solitudes are super mid. I was just worried about like a Juke onto Shouldred or something, but I'm playing Leyline Binding. Oh, even that's not that big of a deal. And I might even want Force of Vigor over the last Solitude. Just none of that. Lots of this. I don't think I like Energy Flux. Maybe I do. I guess the ring is pretty sticky otherwise. And once again, up the Beanstalk's pretty slow. Thinking about if this or maybe Replenish is just too goofy for this matchup. Okay. All goofiness out. All serious anti-storm hate in. Let's go. On the draw, I have Force of Vigor green card and Force of Will no blue card. How good do I think Force of Vigor actually is? It can stuff Grim Monolith key lines. Like they go Monolith key, go to untap Monolith, hit the two. I am actually going to keep this. I like the upside of any blue card gives me more interaction, and their specific build, Force of Vigor, actually seems pretty solid. They're an Urza Saga and Mox Opal deck. Force of Vigor could represent a lot more than the face of the card against cards like that. A B-Storm, straight up main phase it. I do have access to Xander's Lounge and Savannah, which is my domain, if I want to get this binding in, which I probably do. Unless I draw Deafening Silence, then I'll prioritize that. Lotus Petal. Please commit to a aggressive Grim Monolith line here. Okay, here I could Force of Vigor these two, and that's a lot of mana that they just don't get. I'm going to do that. This is kind of the, the line that I played to. If their plan here was Burning Wish Echo, it kills that. They can still use Lotus Petal here, but the Opal hopefully will be off, and they have to lose their hand to LED, so I don't... Unless they were just holding an Echo in their hand, this is going to be a, a pretty big cut out from under them. It feels kind of dirty pitching Pernicious Deed to kill multiple zero mana permanents. It's just like, let's get you to bed, Grandpa. Force of Vigor is here doing it for zero. An opponent did pass without a play, and they're working through that Brainstorm now. I suspect they have Burning Wish in their hand, and that's what's going on over there. Ooh. Oh, okay. Um, nope. Never mind. I was about to say I can Ponder and still play. Oh, no, I can. Yeah, Ponder. Leyline. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Go. I don't know what I was just confused about. I can Ponder and play Leyline Binding here. Probably should have kept that blue card for a turn, but <laughs> never punished. All right, I can fetch Savannah, play Leyline Binding. Now I need to get something going, because I actually feel... Pretty comfortable that we're not just going to die. Grim Monolith is fine. I don't know the top of my deck. I'm not going to fetch. Should have fetched. I could exile the Monolith now, or I could save this Binding for the Ring. I think between Force and Binding, I got a lot of game here. I'd love an Uro or a Shark Typhoon. And Beans are also insane. Yeah, still not going to fetch. And rewarded for not fetching. Big B-Storm. Show me what you're working with sick. It's basically just all the cards I asked for. And I'm going to hide one of these forces. I can cycle Typhoon into that 
I'm holding force blue card, force blue card. I could even cycle Typhoon for zero, pick up a force if they have like Cabal Therapy or something. If they don't make me use my forces this turn, I am going to fetch away the force and make a 1-1 one -one shark and start applying pressure. Because if I find land number five, I also have force, double force. And if I'm not applying pressure, they just don't have to respect anything I'm doing. Savannah, 1-1 one -one shark. There's land number five and the force that was on top anyway. Ding, ding, ding. I feel like I should lay line bind. Nope. I just said I have this five mana up now. I have double force. If they pass again without doing anything, I think I'll take the monolith. But I can't even tell if mana is a gate for them right now. They have four of it, even without the monolith. And if they commit mana off the monolith to play a ring, I would rather bind the ring. And I still suspect they have Burning Wish in hand from that turn one play that they made that we broke up with Force of Vigor. Okay, they're passing. If they're passing, I am going to bind the monolith. Just get this thing out of here. That also makes Mox Opal further away from functioning. Okay, there's land number five again, which means I can ponder really here. Up the Beanstalk, let's go. I'm going to play up the Beanstalk, which keeps Force Blue card, Force Blue card, and they all can trip. Ready to go here. Engines online. Battle cruiser operational. Two Veil of Summers beats me. And I'm not really applying pressure quickly right now. There is a fetch land that can get Mystic Sanctuary, which could be Force of Vigor if I need that, but I don't right now. I think I just play the land and attack. And Mystic Sanctuary can guarantee triple force because I can hard cast one force, force pitch brainstorm on another spell, and Use the Beanstalk to get another blue card for a third force, if I think I need to do that. Dark Ritual. Let's party. The One Ring. Okay. Force of Will, number one. Hardcast mode. How many Veil of Summers you got? I expect at least one. Okay, I'm going to force that pitching Brainstorm. Uh, they had the multi-Veil combo, and they didn't wait for the draws, so I can't even end up with double blue card available even if it is guaranteed all right fine 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 you did it brutal now i need an actual hate card because the ring's in that's scary i think i do mystic sanctuary for ponder here because i am trying desperately to get a squeeze piece in play against this ring now mystic sanctuary get ponder and even a leyline binding to take out the ring would work. Okay, Uro Damping Sphere. I'll take that. Put the Uro on top because I get that anyway. Uro, land drop, Damping Sphere. Get in there. Oh yeah, attack for zero. They do a protection. Who cares? Send a message, big sharks. I don't need to block with that. Draw on two cards with the ring. If they Burning Wish, I'll force it. Because I know Burning Wish can get an answer to Damping Sphere, which I think they'll struggle to win if it's in play. I can play Uro next turn. Let's say Meyer. Is there a fetchable left? At some point, this deck's going to run out of lands. They have so many in play for what their deck actually does. I guess countering the Burning Wish doesn't make sense, because I could counter what they get with Burning Wish. What am I even saying right now? Yeah, they wished for Consign to Oblivion which they have to wait a turn to move on because it would cost all of their mana. If they even have a fifth land in the deck, it would cost all of their mana to put that on the stack. Then I force it and draw a card. Yeah, draw a Brainstorm for turn. Cast Uro out of the bin. Here comes Uro. Now I have a real threat through another land, which means I can hard cast Force, or I can pitch cast Force and make a 3-3. Three, three. Pitch cast Force is probably better. This attack actually does damage. I'm also at 22, so they need Storm 11 to win. Fetch land confirms at least one more land in their deck. And they can't... Okay, they're consigning in the end step. They can't Veil here because they've already cast a spell this turn. I'm going to fetch and see what my land count actually is at this point. Okay. There is a Plains. I know I'm holding Brainstorm, but if I draw any of these fetchable lands, that's really bad. Okay, Force... I could hard cast it here, but then I can't do anything else on their turn. Yeah, I'm going to actually pitch the Brainstorm. Or does Brainstorm make sense? I like Shark Typhoon so much. All right, I'm going to pitch the Shark Typhoon. I'll keep the Brainstorm like a normal person. It did not solve my problem. 
but there it is. They're at 12. They can draw three off the ring. They're also at four minutes on their clock to my 11. Just uh, taking their time over there, enjoying themselves. There's one Force of Will and one Force of Negation left in my deck, and I can't brainstorm into the Force of Negation because of my Damping Sphere. But what's all this? It's just a fresh ring. Get another turn. I am not even upset about that. That means I'm not dead this turn, and I think I have inevitability. They kept the old ring. They want more cards for next turn. Uro is still allowed to attack and draw a card, even if opponent doesn't take damage from it. And they have to go to clean up. Narset part reveals. That's one of the things I was most excited to find here. Back with Uro. Put my land into play. There is one Tundra left in my deck to fetch. The brainstorm is live as possible here. Brainstorm. Oh, baby. They put back the Misty, and I think it's the Typhoon. Or, I mean, Binding. No, it, it's probably Binding. Fetch, Tundra. This costs four. Narset. She can still hit Deafening Silence here. I'll take a Veil of Summer, though. Okay. Opponents under two lock pieces, dead on board to their own ring. Like, I hit for seven, and then they die to ring. They can't draw cards. All right, cool. That was grindy and crazy. Their deck is wild over there. I, I like the Dark Ritual decks are experimenting with the One Ring these days. It's just such a crazy outlet for a burst of mana that can supplement basically any strategy. Glad to get away with that one. On to the next round. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online. Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including Legacy and everything else you'll see on this channel. There's multiple customizations so you can interact with your deck how you want. Views such as text, grid, or stacks, and groupings like type, subtype, color, color identity, even artist. The site offers light mode, dark mode, and so much more. However you want to see your deck, Moxfield can provide it for you. Follow my Moxfield to keep up with the channel and what I'm playing in paper. I'll see you there. On the play in round number two, I'm going to keep this in. Lands and spells. Let's do it. There's no plateau or scrub land to turn Tropical Island into four land types. Hopefully the brainstorm gets us into a leyline binding setup. A swamp. Yikes. Who goes swamp go in this economy? Someone with a uh, dark ritual for opposition agent. I have force of will. I don't mind that so much. I'm going to get Tundra and play the Beanstalk here. This just unlocks basically everything. I was going to brainstorm this turn, but the Beanstalk just changes the equation a lot. Oh, a Force of Will pitching Murktide Regent off Basic Swamp. So are we, are we scam? Is that what's going on here? I'll fight back over this. This is important enough. They already spent two cards fighting over it. I'll spend two cards fighting back. They can't daze me right now. This guarantees a card off the Leyline Binding later. Yeah, okay. Scam it is. They cycle troll for underground sea. They reanimated. I have leyline binding for this at some point. Not right away, unless they find another mana, another land type. I could just straight up cast this for three. I could also play beanstalk and get super paid when I do. I don't really want to play into days if I can avoid it. I'm going to leave up white in case I draw plow, though. All right. I have a deeply discounted leyline binding next turn that's going to draw two cards. Hope I don't get grief right now. Bowmaster is kind of scary too, because my answer to a creature draws two cards. B Storm. And they're passing to me. I think I start with Brainstorm here. Or start with my land. Bayou gets me four types. Xander's Lounge gives me five, but it enters tapped. I think I'm more interested in that. I'm gonna brainstorm off of this tundra. Hope they don't bowmaster in response. Oof gonna get me here now i have an important decision do i want to exile the troll in response and then deal with the bone master or i could exile the bone master in response to the trigger they'd still end up with a 3-3 i think it's better to get rid of the troll in response and just take my beats on the brainstorm i could hit force blue card here in the the miracle draw two brainstorm solitude oh, okay Brainstorm. Oh, I should have let Binding resolve. Now Days is on. That was real dumb. 
It's the same thing if I just let this resolve first. God dang. All right. Well, they targeted Brainstorm. Okay. 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 Well, that's fine. Okay. That could have been way worse than it actually ended up being. Whoops. Okay. I still got a Brainstorm here, and I can hardcast Solitude next turn. I am taking four from this Bowmaster right now. Oh, baby. Okay. Um, put back Beanstalk and Solitude. Then they can do their damage. And this is an attack down to two. I think I'm just dead. Yeah, that sucked. Got a little... I mean, I don't even know if I got a little too excited. I don't think that's fair. I think that play was there. I just needed them not to have Bowmaster. I guess what I could have done is just play the Leyline Binding and held the Brainstorm. And they could get me for two, but not for four. Okay, here I can cycle Shark Typhoon and die. Okay, got it. All right, disappointing. That was have Bowmaster or die, and they had Bowmaster. A Veils, Carpets coming in. Endurance I like. I don't think I like Surgical with all the white removal that I have. Not that big on Force of Will either. Bad Dressdown, Narset, Lavinia all have reasonable text on them. I'm going to go with Lavinia. Okay, let's try this again. Yeah, I think I'm just not supposed to brainstorm proactively there. Just fetch the Xander's Lounge, play the Binding, and then brainstorm over the top of the, the Bowmaster. Though that game is also fine if I find a white card to go with the Solitude, even on that last Haymaker stack that we were digging around. It was close. It was closer than it appeared based on the final game state. On the play, I got Ponder and Beanstalk. I'm going to keep this. Again, Beanstalk, par partially a liability, but literally only if they have Bowmaster. And they can't have Bowmaster before I play the Beanstalk in this particular setup. For keeping this Brainstorm Ponder pile a little concerning, but I'm still going to do it because I'm a psycho. I want to find some white cards. That's what's going on here. Okay, they've got a Grief Scam situation, or at least a Grief Pitching Troll. TBD if they could scam it or not. This is why I left Brainstorm on top. They took my beans. And they have Stalactite Stalker that will get bigger. You got it. I haven't played this card on the channel yet, but it's coming soon, I promise. Brainstorm. A white card. Shocking. They Paseju I don't need, and this third fetch land can probably chill for a minute. Now I can decide if I want to shove into days, and I think the answer is no. Recycling a troll. That's the underground seed they got with that. This also descends in the end step because a permanent went to the graveyard from somewhere. And a brainstorm right now. I fetch for Tundra in the end step. And then just go to my turn. Another one. Okay, plow. I'm going to start with plow. Now that I have two of these, I don't need to worry about sequencing too much. Ooh, land, Lavinia, Leyline Binding. Okay. I don't think I want this land. Oh, maybe I do. Just land, disruption, removal is the rest of my hand. And then I could pick up, up the Beanstalk with Hall of Heli out at some point. Narset Parter Veils. That card's pretty good. I dug up a Ponder. You got it. And I'm going to play Lavinia. She's not like a hammer like she is against certain combo decks, but... They are a Force of Will, Days, Snuff Out deck, and she affects all of those things. She also attacks Narset, which is good. If I can clear her without using my Leyline Binding, that would be great. Brainstorm. They have kept the cards flowing, though. Much to my disappointment. Reanimating Grief. Okay. Uh, Reanimating Grief happens. I can make the Grief miss. I think that's the best thing I can do here. Grab Savannah, plow the grief. They can't daze or force this. And cycle Lorien. I mean, my hand is functionally empty, but they bricked. Do I want Xander's Lounge? I'll get Volcanic Island. That fills out the domain the same as Xander's Lounge does here because of the Bayou. Wasteland. They can take me off black. They could also just cast a Bowmaster. They could also reanimate a troll. That's pretty good. And take me off black. Or no, they can't take me off green or white. My real colors are under me. Yep, taken off black. You got it. And they activated Narset. Found a brainstorm. If I can remove the troll, Narset's dead. Tilt. I don't think I want this Hall of Heliod, because up the beanstalk is not useful to me right now. Troll's getting in. 
They either no longer care about Narset, or they can defend her with other cards. This deck plays plenty of creatures, and I know they have two cantrips in their hand to look for more. There's the Ponder. Okay, a uh, white card. Yeah, that's a white card. Okay, I'm going to attack Narset. They're probably going to Bowmaster. Now I can decide if I want to bind the... I decide how I want to do this, basically. I can let them kill Lavinia, bind Narset, and Brainstorm. I could do Brainstorm right now. I could Leyline plus Brainstorm right now. I could bind the Troll and try to scrape through. That sounds awful. I'm going to bind the, the Narset over the top of this Bowmaster so I can Brainstorm when neither of them are in play yet. They're fetching in response. This brainstorm's really interesting. What are they looking for here? They can't cast... I hope they draw, like, gaze or snuff out, and they just delete it. They can't even cast force. They don't have five mana, or don't have five lands. I wish they could, because it'd be countered. But they can't even cast it. Illegal. They clear the Narset, and then brainstorm off the volcanic island, up the beanstalk, another brainstorm, move. My deck is not built for this shit. I put back Beanstalk and land, and then Brainstorm again. If my last card down is Plow, we might be doing something. Nope. No love. Yeah, we're basically just dead here. That Narset helped me back a little too long. Now I'm dead in one hit, and I know I'm not drawing help. Yeah, I'm drawing Beanstalk, which is drawing Life from the Loam. Yeah, okay. They got me. GG's. Yeah, that was just a, a proper scam pummeling... Uh, my deck is built around drawing more cards than people, and they... Game 1 farmed me for drawing cards, and Game 2 said I couldn't draw cards at all. Just tough line up there. The official Bosch and Roll Island Ponder Keep shirt is available exclusively through Coalesce Apparel. This Magic Player-owned business is a staple of our community. They keep this channel on the air, and it's my pleasure to partner with them for this product. Coalesce is the best Magic Apparel on the market. They have awesome new designs coming out all the time. Use code Bosch and Roll to get 10% off your order only at coalesceapparel.shop. On the play for round number three, I have a turn two Leyline Binding. I have Typhoon plus Replenish. Let's go. I get Pitch Solitude if I need to. I play a basic Plains, but not a basic Island, so I'll lead on Misty Rainforest. Save that Flooded Strand in case it's important. You can't actually play around Wasteland with this deck, though. Like you can only play through it. The one planes in the deck is so you can still ley line binding a blood moon. All right, it looks like we're getting. Oh, I was going to say we're getting oops all spelled because they had Lotus Petal Spirit Guide, but it's actually Turbo Depths, which is great news because I have multiple ways to interact with that where I would have been dead zos to a oops all spells. The Inquisition of Kozilek. Yeah, that resolves. You can have it. Have a look. My deck is built to have five drops in it. Unfortunately for you. Hope the two life was worth it instead of thoughts he's there. Yeah, I even have Beseju. Now I know what this deck is. I got a lot of tools for this matchup right now. I mean, they could pivot onto the grind because they know they can't just send it. But it's possible that their hand could only send it. They also might send it once, gain 20, and then just try to grind through with 40 life. So Jerry Step tapped as land number two. You love to see it. Vampire Hex Mage, you got it. Do I want to just bind this Hex Mage? I think I do. Yeah, I'm going to grab my Savannah, Leyline bind the Hex Mage. If they Spirit Guide crop rotation here, they know I'm holding Solitude. Just don't give them any window to do a trick when my hand is just insane removal like this. Yep, that's out of here. I hope I draw a land that's not Besage you. Uh, okay, Ponder's fine. Lands that are not Besage you would be great. Okay, that's a land and a Beanstalk and another Solitude. If Besage is just such a good tool in this matchup, I'm not going to skip a land drop to keep access to it, but it is insanely good here. And I don't really want to play it as a land if I don't have to. That's Bean Stage. Yeah, I draw Beanstalk here. And it's another Solitude under this. I'm going to go up the Beanstalk. I'm going to draw that Solitude. Now I have a double Solitude, double white card. And I will make the Besage as a land drop at this point. My next land, Casting Solitude, is so nuts. Shark Typhoon can also block Merit Lage for a turn. I'm not even dead if it sticks, necessarily. Source of Plowshares joins the army. 
I'm just going to pass here, and I'm going to make a 2-2 shark in their end step. Okay, they're showing me Dark Depths now. The combo is here. They need to protect it at least three times if they go for it. 2-2 two, two Shark in the end step. They've seen the Replenish. They know what my end game is. Pernicious Steed, not helpful here at all, actually, unfortunately, because it's my favorite card in the deck. Ponder, I would like... How would I like these cards to show up? I believe I want the second Sword Supplashers in my hand right now. I'll draw Basic Planes next turn. And I'm fine, fearlessly attacking. They are not going to hit with this Merrill Leech this turn. Even if every card in their hand was not of this world... Merit Lage would still die this turn. That's how rolled up I am right now. Okay, uh, something's happening. If they have the uh, sacrifice a creature, deal damage equal to its power in their main deck, they can get me here, which would be a crazy thing to have in the main. But that would work. Okay, end step. Swords of Plowshares. Let's start working through those three cards in your hand. All right, they just wanted to gain 20. Deal. The race is on. And if you're over there chilling with not threatening me, then I'm going to put Shark Typhoon into play. And now I could cast Swords to Plowshares, which makes a 1-1 blocker, even if they can protect from one plow. And Shark Typhoon this early should eat up that 40 life pretty quick. I do need to stay aware of Beseju. If they kill my Leyline Binding, that gives them back their Vampire, which makes Dark Depths. Just stay in. <laughs> Have a look. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, I'd scoop to that too. Woof. Okay, Turbo Depths is the name of the game here. Veil of Summer is going to be good. I don't have a lot of sideboard for this because I don't need a lot of sideboard for this. I have so much white removal in the main deck. It's mostly fine. Force of Vigor respects Choke. Endurance is a reach blocker. And sometimes they pivot onto a Life from the Loam plan. Pernicious Deed wasn't good here. They might have Mox Diamonds in their deck that they just didn't see there, but I'll live without them. I don't really like Force of Negation. I'm not that hyped on Force of Will either, but I think I want to leave it in and shave a Beanstalk. Surgical Extraction has reasonable arguments here because with all the white removal, we got to assume we're going to make it through at least one Merit Lage and then there'll be a Dark Depths in the graveyard. I just don't think it's necessary and there's nothing else I want to cut. If I had just a bunch of bad cards in here, if I was like main decking three Force of Negations, I would put the Surgicals in over those. But I'm not. Let's go. Okay, Force Blue card, Solitude White card. No white mana for this plow, but I have Ponder and Brainstorm to go find it. I'm keeping. Let's go. Leyline of the Void. Fascinating. That Replenish was enough for them to bring in Leyline of the Void. And <laughs> the Bajooka Bog. Okay, I really, really don't have a graveyard. You know, I have Force of Vigor, Beseju, and Leyline Binding in my deck to mess with Leyline of the Void. Leyline on Leyline Violence. I also have four cards in my deck that care about the graveyard. Okay, I like this up the beanstalk. I like this ponder as an extra blue card. I don't really need that land underneath it, but I'm going to end up with all these cards, I think. Yeah, I'm going to end up with all of them anyway. Yeah, cards in my deck that care about Leyline are the two Uros, Life from the Loam, Replenish, and... All of Heliod. So I have five cards that care about Leyline. I imagine they'll take Plow here. Yep, Plow's gone. That's me in stage. I don't believe they can make Dark Depths without through Force of Will here, so I'm going to tap out for up the Beanstalk while the getting's good. They would have to, like, Spirit Guide, Spirit Guide, Crop Rotation, which I forced the Crop Rotation and they're, they're bricked. Okay, Merit Lage is presented here. I can't currently answer it, but I have Ponder and Brainstorm to find a white card. Leyline Binding is all the way on because I have Bayou and Volcanic Island. All right, that takes some pressure off. If I can also come up with a Leyline Binding here, I have double protection. Ponder, Beanstalk, Xander's Lounge, that's a shuffle. Veil of Summer, that's fine, I guess. All right, I'm going to play the planes and hope they wait. Okay, they waited. Good deal. Like, I could have solituded Merit Lage and then forced their not of this world. Veil of Summer, this duress. Feeling good about that. Florian Revealed is a nice one to pitch to force. Get to hold on to my brainstorm. 
I think they kind of have to go for it here because they know about Solitude. And if I get to five mana, then I'm doing everything. I'm going to brainstorm. They may have juked onto something like Orcish Bowmaster. I'm just going to hope that they didn't. Uro's a nice pitch to force since the ley line is there. If I put back Flooded Strand, Misty Rainforest. No, I want to put back Tundra, Flooded Strand. And then I'm going to fetch, play the second Beanstalk, and then I can pitch Solitude, pitch four, draw four cards if they want to do anything here. Any of those four cards could be Plow or Leyline Binding. Something's happening. Okay, nope, just fetching. They've seen the Solitude. I think I cycle Lorien Revealed here to guarantee Solitude mana. I still have Force Blue card. His Life from the Loam is turned off. Okay, just pass with Solitude up from here. Could even hard cast Force if they duress me. Now the question is, do I want to play a Solitude just to start attacking and draw some cards? I kind of do, actually. 3-2 lifelink, draw two cards. There's so much removal in my deck. I'm not really worried about losing critical removal if I play the Solitude. And it immediately replaced itself with a Plow. Replenish. All right. The Ley Line is building up here. I'm going to attack with Solitude first. Because this attack puts me over 20 life, which means I can absorb a Merit Lage hit. Cycle Lorien revealed. Hit my land drop. Shame to do that when I have two Beanstalks and five mana, but I think it's right. Triple Thespian stage. They can have so many Merit Lages. That's not even true. They can have one. I'm goofing. All right, looks like we're making a move here. I don't even care if they do fling it at me. I have that. I have more than 20 life. They did that after making their land drop for the turn, so they can't play another Depths right now. End step, Solitude. I do have to be vaguely aware of getting decked. There is one Endurance in here, and a bunch of answers to Leyline. I'm just going to keep that in mind. And I will attack with my Solitudes. This is where the chat would be screaming at me. This is where you hardcast Shark Typhoon if you're ever going to do it. I think you're right. Flying attackers, flying blockers. This can outmuscle the Merit Lage eventually. Uh, I drew a Leyline Binding. I'm going to clear the, the Leyline of the Void so I could go to discard and actually enjoy my long game around Endurance. Make a 6-6, six, six, draw a million cards. Unfazed, in my lane, moisturized, GG. On to the next round. If you're looking to run a CEDH or 1v1 tournament, Eminence Gaming has your back with Command Tower. With Command Tower's intuitive tournament manager dashboard, you can handle deckless submission and player management with just a few clicks. Players just need to scan the event's QR code for access to the full tournament bracket, including seamless pairings and real-time standing updates. Take the guesswork out of tournament organizing. Try Command Tower for your next event. On the play in round four, this is almost Island Ponder. It's definitely Forest Loam. I will keep it. I actually think I'm not going to cast this Ponder. The Ponder is my blue card for Force, and if they Wasteland the land I fetch with Heath, then I can't even get Loam started. I think the safest play here is just Windswept Heath go, and then hold up Force blue card and pick up my land with Loam next turn, and then I'm cooking. Opponent's on a mold of 5, which is nice, because I had already decided I wasn't casting this Ponder, but now I'm definitely not casting it. Ancient Tomb. Ancient Tomb Go is what they said. I don't have a Wasteland in this deck. No room for it this time. Tropical Island, Life from the Loam. Land drops are good. This is where I need to be worried about Cavern on Human, Magus of the Moon. Usually not in main decks. Cavern of Souls is the card I'm worried about. There it is, of course. On Goblin. Okay. What Goblin is coming my way? Matron. Okay. Yeah, even if they Mind Goblin here, I can force the spell that comes out of the Mind Goblin, so Cavern doesn't actually solve that problem. I wonder if I'm supposed to Dredge Loam here. I think I am. Yep, they got Mind Goblin. Yeah, I'm going to Dredge Loam. I want to make sure I hit my land drops. I milled over an Uro. Down and dirty. I like that. Fetch for Tundra. Loam target the one land. Wish that was two, but here we are. And I think I actually want to let Mind Goblin resolve and its trigger happen. Then I'll force what comes out of it. 
This does get punished by a second cavern, but they made their land drop first. Don't have to worry about that. I just think Plow is better against something like Broadside Bombardiers that they could just put into play. Okay, Mind Goblin. How many nuts? Six nuts. The nuts. Okay. That worked. The Force of Will is legal now. Yeah, I kind of think they're actually supposed to tap their Mountain Ancient Tomb and leave Cavern back. That makes me fight over the, the Mind Goblin. Do I want to brainstorm in the end step for Velocity? I think I do. And I'm going to decline Loam on the Brainstorm draws. I might, if I put two lands back. One, two, three, Solitude Stope. All right, put two lands back, Dredge Loam. If Dredge Loam clears all the lands, and then I get them anyway. Work, working my way towards a big old pernicious deed. I can also Uro next turn. I have Solitude, Hardcast next turn. Things are coming together here if I don't get exploded in the near future. Second Cavern. Yes. Showed up a little late. They might just have another Muxus in their hand. I don't know. Battlecry Goblin, which is counterable. However, Mountain, Cavern of Souls doesn't activate this thing. Now they're doing it backwards the other way. I don't think it is unfair or unsporting to say that my opponent could have tapped their mana better uh, during this game so far. Up to and including right now. Uh, I'm actually just going to take this damage because I'm more worried about Battlecry Goblin than I am about Mind Goblin. Plow the Battlecry Goblin. Draw for turn. Not going to dredge loam. I have lands now. Up the Beanstalk. Okay, I could just shove Uro into play here. I think having the biggest creature is valuable right now. I'm going to get Bayou to turn on Deed and Savannah to turn on Solitude. This Uro Exile is super awkward because I have all of Heliod in play, Loam in my graveyard, and access to Mystic Sanctuary, so I actually care about every permanent type. The creature's a freebie. I don't care about that one. I think Dress Down, Force of Will, Brainstorm, Solitude. This leaves Leyline Binding Life from the Loam Swords to Plowshares. I can party with that, I guess. Don't Dredge Loam, Drew Lorien Revealed. I have made a land drop this turn. Okay, the shields are down for one turn, and then I'm feeling great. Please don't muxes me right now. They have an ancient tomb. If they had two muxies, one of them can resolve here. All right, we're just going to combat. That's great news. And passing. Love it. Okay. I would like to just draw cards at this point. Though, I do, I'm attacking with Uro. I'm going to dredge loam one more time. And immediately miss on a bonus land. I really needed two lands here for this play to make sense. And I did not get them. Spending a mana to lure in Revealed doesn't solve my problems here. A Life from the Loam does turn on Mystic Sanctuary. I will take that as enough. If I Loam here, attack, put this land in. I could cycle lure in Revealed and guarantee two lands hit this turn. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll get a Volcanic Island that gives me Domain. Play Misty Rainforest. I don't have three islands yet. Have to attack first. Don't dredge alone. Put in the Valk. Now I have Leyline Binding. That can be Leyline Binding or a white card for Solitude, and they're both pretty good. Mystic Sanctuary for Swords to Plowshares. Up the Beanstalk. Okay. Handful of Interaction. They passed last turn with no plays. I can Leyline Binding draw a card. Solitude draw a card. And then next turn, I could just sit Deed in play and threaten X equals 4 activation. Cool. Didn't have to show them the Deed. Yeah, I think their, uh, their mana tapping was a little wonky at points there, and they may have been able to do a little more than they did. Hydro Blast Dress Down coming in. Replenish is not good the first time around, that's for sure. Like, I need to use multiple cards first before replenishing them does anything yeah i think replenish might be too cute for this matchup where we might just die on turn two plow's great deed's probably good i like all the white removal could be a beanstalk again i've been shaving one of those a lot it's something that i like to do in fast matchups i can dress down on their turn three which might be way too slow i'm gonna keep because i'm a psycho I see some islands in a ponder. What, what can I do? There's literally no other choice here. Have to keep. 
Go to coalesceapparel.shop and get a Boss and Roll Island Bonder Keep t-shirt right now. Another Leyland of the Void Gamer. And they mold to six to find this thing. So they're down two cards now. And I boarded out Replenish this time. I guess they did see Loma and Uro as like my whole plan last game. Oh, the Sanders Lounge. I think I should ponder now that I've drawn a second untapped land and guaranteed the dress down on the next turn. Hydroblast Shark Typhoon Binding. I mean, yeah, these cards are fine. They're not Force of Will, but very few cards are. In fact, all but four cards in my deck are not Force of Will. Just going to close my eyes, cover my ears, and hope I'm still alive next turn. Ancient Tomb is here. Matron. Okay, they're investing in the future. Matron found Prospector. Interesting. Okay. Now I have a choice, because Dress Down bricks anything, even through a Cavern of Souls. But Hydroblast bricks most things. They could have played Cavern this turn and didn't. I'm going to slide the Sanders Lounge into play and hope Hydroblast gets me over the hump. A little bit of a risk, but for a long-term payoff. And Skark Prospector is a weird tutor. Rabble Daddy? Yeah, I'll just blast that. Counter target spell if it's red. That one qualifies. That makes some sense. If they were trying to poop out tokens over the next couple turns and then use Pro Prospector to turn those tokens into mana, kind of a long-term plan that I could see being reasonable. And I would like to collapse if I can. Okay, cool. Now Shark Typhoon can trade with Goblin Matron if I just need to take some pressure off. Dress Down can stop whatever. Oh my god, this card is completely unreadable. What is this? Breaches Eager Pilferer. Oh, this is that draft bomb from LCI. 3-3 three, three, first strike. Whenever a pirate you control attacks, choose one that hasn't been chosen this turn. Make a treasure. Target creature can't block. Exile the top card of your library. Okay. That does not have haste on its own. And this is not a pirate. I will move forward with my plan of trading 1-1 one, one shark for this goblin matron. Which is not a sexy or respectful use of shark typhoon. But that's the, the thing about shark typhoon. It's just good anywhere on the curve. And I'm mostly looking for lands here, which we did just fine. And knowing that they tutored for Skirk Prospector last turn, that's also kind of a stone rain, because we just took a goblin out of play. I like it. This Heath can get a Savannah or a Bayou, either one turns on Leyline Binding. I should probably brainstorm. I was about to pass the turn just without doing anything, but if I find a Beanstalk, I'm really going to want that in play. No beanstalk. I did find land number five. I'm going to put this pernicious deed back in the deck. This is pretty far away from being what I want to be doing. And I'm going to float this ponder on top and just make it rain shark typhoons on them. Okay, they're playing bombardiers, which is a pirate. I'm going to dress down before attacks. Do I want to shuffle away the ponder before I do this? I think I do. I'm going to fetch Savannah and then dress down. Broadside Bombardiers cannot sacrifice Leyland of the Void, luckily. Do I want to bind this thing and not take three? Yeah, probably. It's also a draw and mana engine for next turn. And I'm out here chilling anyway. Just got this mana open. Still at 18 life. Only damage I've taken this game was from myself. Did I take one hit from Matron? Okay, it looks like I did take one hit from Matron. Fine, fine. Okay, life total's high, but I haven't actually done anything yet. A Solitude would be insane. Oh, there's that pernicious deed back. We're almost to the point where this is dope. I have five minutes of this turn, six next. Most of their things are threes. I am going to brainstorm right now. There's Solitude. Hall of Helia, not useful for a while. Love, 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 love Solitude, though. Okay, if I put back Hall... I mean, my Force of Will is live. They haven't played a land since turn two, much less a cavern. Yeah, I think I'm actually just going to stack the, the fetch land on top. Because I actually do want to draw lands here and get this deed up to four. Name, sticker, goblin. I could force of will this or what comes out of it. This gets swept up in the deed. Alright, I'm going to let them have this. No risk, no reward. No gamble, no future. Patron. Yeah, you can have that too. Another bombardiers. You got it. And Skirk Prospector. Okay, these are all things that died a pernicious deed. And... They can attack me for two and fling me for five. I can afford to take seven here. Not a big deal. And they are fiving me right away. Now I'm actually not going to cycle Shark Typhoon. 
because it doesn't do anything. It just makes a 2-2 that gets swept up in my pernicious deed when I'm drawing the land that I know I want here anyway. Black, green, colorless. I would have liked to wait until I could get the ley line here too, kind of, on the house. But there's enough going on. I'll, I'll take my fight right now. And we somehow have the same life total. Their ancient tomb has done as much damage to them as they have done to me. This deed is basically just going to be like time walk three for one this turn. That's a pretty good card. If they just move to combat, I have to sweep with deed. Oh, okay. Or, or they could sack their board for mana pre-combat. And then I force whatever they're going to play with it. That's interesting. Yeah, just sitting in the deed here might convince them to do something reckless into my my blue deck. Knowing that they have a haste creature in their hand, a haste three drop, I don't want to deed in on my turn or on their upkeep to stop them from getting this mana. It's more important for me to check the thing that I know they have. Because if they throw their board into a Muxus here, and then I just force it and still have deed and six mana up, they're not winning. Chromox, another thing that dies to pernicious deed. You got it. They pitched the Bombardiers, and that might be Pyroblast. Yeah, they are representing Pyroblast here. If their hand is Muxus Pyroblast, they will resolve a Muxus. Okay, they sack the Prospector here, which means they can't Pyroblast anymore. Okay, Force of Will that. Do I want to take five to kill the Ley Line? I don't think so. I'll just clear out the the Chromox and the Bombardiers before combat here. I guess it's four, right? It's two plus the mana value. Okay, yeah. Like, I could have gone to five there and then cleared the Ley Line as well, but I think this Solitude will beat their one-card hand from where I am. And there's basically nothing this deck can do between Solitude and Dress Down off one card in hand and three mana. The scariest thing is, like, Blood Boon. I guess that's pretty effective. Simeon Spirit Guy, that's where we are. Resolves. One, two, three, four. I'm going to hold the Solitude and just cycle a giant Shark Typhoon. I'll hit them with my 4-4, four, four, and then they can't tap their Ancient Tomb anymore, and they have to beat me with Basic Mountain. The Seiju answers Ley Line, just in case this game was going to take longer, but it's not. And I drew Force of Will. Get it done, Big Sharky. I've done my first four damage to my opponent this game. Luckily, it was their last six life points that it bit into. Yep, they tapped their Ancient Tomb, went out like a boss. GG, that felt good. Just controlling this explosive red deck. Been losing to this deck a lot lately. That was a, a nice little clean sweep of it. On to the final round. We're a few rounds into the video. Thanks for sticking with me. Friendly reminder that if you're still here and having fun, smash that subscribe button. And if you want to play what I'm playing, you can use my affiliate link for TCG Player to support the channel while you shop for cards. And you can try any deck anytime with a cardhoarder.com loan account for Magic Online. All these links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. On the play with Island Ponder and Forest Loam Keep in a Yorian matchup, I will keep this hand. Seeing Yorian, whether it is mono white or five color, I am already slightly concerned about decking and clock, and I want to stay on top of both of those resources from the jump. I'm going to get a Tropical Island and cast my Ponder. All right, three lands. Uh, this is interesting because I would have liked exactly one land in this Ponder, I'm not going to mulligan. I'm not going to shuffle it. I will take two of these lands and then loam. One land would have insulated me versus wasteland and still gotten loam rolling. Three lands is just a, a lost draw step. But I'd rather insulate against wasteland than just incinerate my chances here. I'm going to grab a tundra and play loam. They are a blue, or at least a fetchland positive version of Yorion. I guess this could just fetch a Plains or a Scrubland, and they could still be Death and Taxes. Whatever they are, I'm set up on resources. Now I just need cards to cast. Okay, another fetch land. I don't think this is Death and Taxes. I did not dredge loam, and then I drew another Misty Reinforced anyway. Had the full house of fetches there. Beanstalk would be a great draw. Uro would be a great draw. Shark Typhoon is always a solid draw. Yeah, if I can get this Replenish hanging out, Start putting some sharks in the graveyard and, and see where that lands me. That's a pretty good place to be. It's not a good enough line to start dredging loam into. Not yet, anyway. I picked up Force, which I can hardcast next turn. No blue card yet. 
I'm never going to miss a land drop. If my opponent wants to play a land go with me, we can do this. The Xander's Lounge gives me something to spend mana on. And I can pick it back up with Loam. So now I have kind of a draw engine going. This is one of only two black sources in the deck, though. And if I cycle it, that makes Pernicious Deed half as castable. Okay, I'm going to get a Savannah here. I can grab Bayou whenever. I don't want to expose it to Wasteland in the meantime. And I'll just get a little guard advantage right now. They might Bowmaster me. They have a bunch of Esper fetches around. That didn't happen. Lauren revealed on the scene. Multiple Lauren reveals on the scene. I'm not going to start a fight yet. Okay, something's happening. They're fetching in my end step. I wonder if they have Samwise. Is this actually Esper Yorian cards? Brainstorm, okay. That's not a Samwise. Not yet. They could still have that card too. But I'm holding up Hardcast Force or Hardcast Solitude. I could Hardcast Solitude and Pitchcast Force. If they just put a bunch of Dinguses into play, I can Deed for four. Just from the top rope. First spell of the game. Oh, the reality chip. All right, they got they got a chippo. They can look at the top card of their library, and as long as this is attached to a creature, they can play cards from the top of the library. That's fine. This is looking like an Esper Vile strategy more than a blue control deck at this point. I am medium to high confidence in that. Do I want to invest in this deed? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Not quite. I still think I could get them real good with it. Because this chip's currently not attached to anybody. I mean, Samwise would be really good with this Caracas. The chip is also a legend. I have to be careful about solituding that thing. Yorian's at the grip. This is where we've come to. Okay. I think I'm going to fire a Lorian reveal this turn if I don't draw something better to do. All right. I'm going to make a move. First move of the game. Crack a bunch of fetches. Get Bayou. Get Volk. Just get my less good lands out of the way here. And then fire this Lorian revealed. I can fight over some number of Orcish Bowmasters if that happens. If they force this, I'm okay with that two for one. All right, we're just in there drawing cards. I'm going to guess this Ponder. I haven't found a land yet. Okay, there's a land. Don't dredge Loam. Play Flooded Strand. I have to go to some amount of cleanup here. Is there a fetchable left with Misty Rainforest? Yeah, Volcanic Island's in there. Okay, I could cast another Ponder. Volcanic Island, Ponder, Brainstorm, Swords to Plowshares. I don't think I need more of this sort of effect. I'm just going to shuffle this. And I have to discard two cards at the end of turn. I don't want to make them use their Caracas. That's not worth a plow. All right, yeah. Uh, maybe that was a little too aggressive. Um... I didn't find a Shark Typhoon anywhere in there. I was hoping to at least stock up on Replenish. I mean, I discard Lorian Revealed and Swords to Plowshares. Cavern of Souls. Yikes. Naming Human. What instant speed humans do I care about? Uh, I'm going to brainstorm here because I don't think both of these Flooded Strands can still fetch anything. There's Uro. Sweet. Merciful. Richard Garfield. All right, get rid of the, the Replenish for now. Get Plains, Uro, Blue Green Colorless. The Caracas is a problem for Uro. This is not even a win con. Yeah, I love that plow, actually. This Uro is not going to work anyway. Up the Beanstalk, let's go. That's a direction I'd like to go in. This will get swept up in my Pernicious Deed. No Shark Typhoon yet has me actually really worried. I'm fully halfway through my deck, more than halfway through my deck, and haven't seen a win condition yet. I'm still going to keep cantripping. I think it is right to do that. But these Shark Typhoons and Replenishes have to do work when they show up. Okay, they're fetching in response. Basic Swamp. More fetching. More fetching. Orcish Bowmaster. Well, I'm going to Swords to Plowshares that. Let's start that fight. This is the first thing that they can't bounce with Caracas. Oh no, an uncounterable human. Urtai the Resurrected. Cool. All right, well, that can't be countered. And it's under Caracas. Cool. All right. Well, this will counter my plow and force me to draw a card, which pings me with Bowmaster again. Pernicious Deed has waited its whole life for this moment. Okay, they're bouncing Urtine now. I think I need to Solitude this. Solitude exiling Leyline Binding, which does force another draw, but at least clears this 
block out of the game. Dress Down's really powerful against this deck, too. Get Urtai out of here. And I still have a Ponder at the bottom of this stack somehow. Shark Typhoon. All right, cool. Force of Will, Shark Typhoon. I'll take both of those. Orc Army is 4-4 already. Pernicious Deed, mop it up. Deed also kills my up the Beanstalk, which at this point is more liability than helpful. They could attach the Rally Chip and dump a bunch of cards into play. They did not determine that was worth doing. We know they're holding Yorian in hand, and then four mystery cards. Skyclave Apparition, that's fine. That's actually better, because I was going to kill my Beanstalk anyway, and now I get a 2-2 out of the deal. Play some more permanents. Permanence, permanence, permanence. Oh, I actually can't. Can I deck? No, because if I deed, if I, I have Hall of Heliod. If I put Pernicious Deed on top of my deck and blow it for zero every turn, I do play at least one enchantment that doesn't can trip. Okay, okay. I don't need to be that worried about decking. I need to be worried about Wasteland, killing my Hall of Heliod, and now from the top rope. The moment you've all been waiting for. Pernicious Deed. One, two, three, four, five permanents in play for my opponent, including giving me back a token. Force of Will pitching Yorion. I will, of course, fight over this. Force pitching Force. Uh, I sh probably should have pitched Uro, actually. I'll pitch Uro to the next Force. One, two, three. I'm just going to Deed now. I don't know if they have any instant speed flicker effects or... If there's instance on top of their deck with reality chip, or if they get priority on their main phase, I don't want to give them any card advantage. I don't have to. Stoneforge Mystic. I'm going to dress that down, then let it resolve. There's this Force of Negation in my hand. The other stack? Oh, I have one Beseju. I was about to say, what are my answers even to a Caracas? <laughs> right on time, suckers. Green, colorless, blue, arrow. Don't dredge loam. The Seiju, the Caracas, while Uro is still in play. Blue, blue, green, green. This gives me the extra mana, because I control Legend at this moment. And they are bouncing the Uro back to my hand, which is long-term card advantage to short-term not die to Uro. Probably a good deal overall. Refire the Uro. Oops, something's happening. Solitude. I could force this. Yeah, I don't really want to play against the Solitude. That's just pretty annoying when my goal here is to get their life total gone before my deck is gone. Plow's great. I'm going to attack. I'm winning the race right now. And if their last card in hand is Cauldra, I have Plow for it. I do have to be careful with Replenish because most of the enchantments in my deck draw a card when they enter the battlefield. All of Heliod. Okay. Now we're cooking. Attack with Illusion. feel like I'm pulling ahead here. They took two, I play Hall, and pass. I can get at least one Shark Typhoon out of this Hall, even if they Wasteland right now. Stoneforge is attacking. I'm going to make a 4-4 Shark with the ability to recur my Shark Typhoon. We're in the end game now, Stark. Source to Plowshares, sure. That is a uh, actual card spent on something that immediately replaced itself. And I gained more life than that combat ended up dealing. Because uh, I drew a Shark Typhoon, I'm actually going to put Dress Down on top of my deck with Hall of Heliod and just make sure that their ETB Esper creature deck can't find a foothold here. You got three cards in their hand and 11 life. Yorion's long gone, pitched to a Force of Will a thousand years ago. Still sending the goons. I'll do the same thing, put a 4-4 four four in front of it. I can do this all day. Drew a Plow. They've got March of Otherworldly Light, sure. That's fine. And I'll take one from Stoneforge Mystic. I'm not worried about that one point of damage compared to keeping the sharks coming. I also have this Uro in my graveyard that I should probably get into play. Uro can exile my Loam, which I would never do in paper, but it is eating up like a split second every time I draw a card. And that is one of the things I care about right now. Green, green, blue, blue. Mostly clicking at random, just Loam and whatever else they got. Okay, Force of Will on that, sure. The Loam's gone, so that's fine. Opponent is Hellbent versus my Hall of Heliod. With 60 cards in my deck, I'm doing fine. And finally, chickened out of an attack. I'm going to tap out to make a 3-3 Shark. I actually do want to be pushing damage right now. Hull Breacher, 
cool. All right, well, that's actually sick because now I can't deck because I'm not drawing extra cards and I don't care how much mana they have. Shark Typhoon back on top of my deck in my draw or in my upkeep. Then I draw it for turn and I keep bashing. Happy to trade for Hall Breacher. I'm not going to replay Uro. I'm going to get this done in the air. The presence of Hall Breacher is interesting. This could just be in a Recruiter of the Guard package, or it could be a sign that they have like a an eject button like Days Undoing. End of turn. Take a 4 4 Shark. They get a treasure that doesn't affect my life. Draw for turn and fly for seven. Okay, I am two and a half minutes behind them on clock, but up a game. Esper Vile confirmed. We didn't see a Vile, but I assume they're in there. I would like Endurance to make sure I can't deck. Dress Down is good. I don't like Force of Negation. Force of Will is fine, but I don't need all of them. They never saw the Replenish. Like, Veil doesn't matter. Force of Vigor might hit, like, a back to basics. We saw a lot of basic lands out of them. But I have Leyline Binding that can deal with that too, so I don't need to get too special or specific here. Our set could just be a card draw engine. Just dig for stuff to do. But I don't think stuff to do is going to be my problem. It's going to be having resources under me and making sure I'm actually winning. How about that pernicious deed, by the way? That was in the opening hand, and I was just like, we're going to do this for four at some point. And that did end up swinging the game. Okay, Uro in the opening grip. We keep these. Let's party. Playing against the clock here. I can pitch force or pitch solitude if I need to do either of those things. Beseju could kill an aether vial. They mold to five. That's not very many cards in a control mirror. Uh, I guess planes go. That basic plane showing up. I'm not in a hurry to get domain. I'm holding swords to plowshares. Cavern of Souls, please name core. Bird. What bird? I mean, Yorion's a bird. Are we planning for Yorion already, or is there like Avon Mind Sensor coming? Is there some bird I don't even know about? Oh, a blue bird. Oh, Baleful Strix! I love that for you. Nice. All right, well, that, that certainly is a bird. Up the Beanstalk. This is my Baleful Strix. Great draw. Loam also. Now I'm not worried about Wasteland. Okay, uh, my resources are under me. I have an engine online and then another two other engines in my hand between Uro and Life from the Loam. Just need to not get cheesed out too hard by some hate piece. Another cavern. Orc. Oh, I wonder what that is. Weird. Okay, uh, I can just cast Loam here and get that going. Yeah, I'm going to grab a Tundra and then Loam my Misty Rainforest. I could have just shoved Uro there, but I kind of want to keep this Orcish Bowmaster from getting too rowdy. Brainstorm's fine. Like next turn, I could dredge loam Beseju, a cavern, and then pick up two lands and just work towards Uro. I could also Beseju the Strix if I think that's better. That's the greatest lifespan a Baleful Strix could ever have. ETB, draw a card, get killed, ramp. Kind of the nuts. Prismatic ending on this. I could force this, or I could ignore it. It's fine. That was a two-for-one already. I think I am going to dredge Loam here. If I can pull ahead with Uro, we're going to be in great shape. Fetch, leaving up white. Get a tropical island here. Play Uro. I can put Beseju in as a land if I don't draw one naturally. I do want to cast Loam this turn and pick up multiple lands. Uro's in. They do have an uncounterable orc. I have a perfectly counterable, but online sword supply shares. I take one, I gain three, spike. Uh, and because I had to plow, I don't get to loam this turn. But I have loam. Got to keep my Beseju. I could play Solitude next turn. Uro's ready to attack. I'm ready to game. I don't have force anymore, which is fine because they have 100 Cavern of Souls. Drawing a blue card would be nice, though, if I could just insulate against a Plow or a Solitude out of their three-card hand from here. Opponents having a nice long think here in this combat step, which is great, because I'm now within 20 seconds of them on the clock. The most important resource of all. Uh-oh, opponent disconnected. That is a tough loss of resources. We'll see if they come back at all. Okay, they made it back. 
eight minutes left on their clock. Hopefully we just beat them soundly and that doesn't end up mattering, but I don't think they're going to win two games in eight minutes as far as raw league result goes. Greenstorm, go for it. I don't want to fetch in the end step just in case they have something stupid like Opposition Agent or even Mind Sensor. Fetching on my turn is basically the same thing, except I get to hold up Swords to Plowshares. Aether Vile, right on time. It's turn five. And a land. Down to one card in hand. They'll probably grab Yorion here. Nothing else to do. Yep, Yorion is now in their hand. Which means I can fetch. Which means I can get the Xander's Lounge out of the way here. Draw for turn. Leyline Binding. Not a blue card. Yeah, I'm going to Loam. Using my basic planes, which can't cast a row anyway. I have blue, blue. I need green, green. So this has to get Savannah or Trop. I'll take Savannah. And green, green, blue, blue. And I have to exile my whole graveyard. Nothing to think about here. Loam's gone, but clock no longer an issue. Didn't find the blue card I was hoping for there to protect a row. But here we are. They got two cards in their hand. One of them's Yorion. Palace Jailer. Yucko. Yeah, this would have been a great thing to force of will. Yikes. All right, well, I mean, that's in. I think my best course of action here is to try to use Solitude as a surprise next turn and get through their, their activity. And I'm going to be kind of aggressive about my cards right now. Like, they can play an uncountable Yorian next turn, which can flicker the Strix, which represents cards, and I need to clear blockers if I'm going to take the Monarch and get my Uro back anyway. Aether Vial number two. Last card in hand is Yorian. Currently, Coast is clear. Shark Typhoon plus Solitude is a lot of surprise interaction here. Unfortunately, that Monarch draw was a big one. Vial's on one and two now. Solitude doesn't fly. Shark Typhoon does. Yeah, depending on what they do here, will determine how I move forward with my life. Umazawa's Jute, I don't care about. They're equipping the Orc army. And now I do have Force Blue card. I can just make a 6-6 six, six Shark eat this thing. I lose my Force, or my Blue card back up. But this is the flying creature I wanted. They can't Yorion from their position. They have one card in their hand, and I drew the... One unknown card in the hand. And I drew the blue card for force, even if they do have a plow here. They would need something to come out of Aether Vial that can delete a 6-6 token. Or else they are in big trouble right now. Going in. Combat. And we have connected. I'm the Monarch. I get back Uro. It dies right away, because that's how Uro works. Put in Mystic Sanctuary. Target Swords to Plowshares. Yes, I'm going to draw that from the Monarch. I got seven cards in hand. I have to use one of them. I'm going to draw for the Monarch and then cast the Plow in my instep rather than cast the one now. Okay, they're violing in something. This could be Bowmaster. Stoneforge Mystic, sure. Go for it. The Reality Chip, sick. Love that technology. End step. Use the Plow that they think I just drew. Seven cards in hand, pass. Yeah, the chip kind of rips here, actually. That is a cool way to dig back into the game. I, my hand is full of answers to it, but they don't know that right now. Marsh Flats, I know two of the three cards in the hand. Yorion is uncounterable, but I can kill Palace Jailer before it can get flickered. They've drifted under five minutes on the clock. They're behind on board, way behind on cards. I believe this game belongs to me. Swords to Plowshares here. Yeah, if they're not going to try to flicker with Yorion or not going to try to put in the chip, I'll just save my interaction. Maybe I'm supposed to put Shark Typhoon on top there. Card's really good. Attack with Shark Typhoon. Or Shark Token, whatever this is. This object. Okay, here's the one unknown card from their hand. Whatever it tutors for, I'll be able to see. Baleful Strix. Okay, they can vial that in and trade. Yeah, that's pretty strong. I'm still the Monarch. I still have access to unlimited Shark Typhoons. Yeah, we can trade those off. That's fine. I'm not going to use a actual spell on that. Fetch for Tropical Island. Play Uro. Green, green, blue, blue. Leave up all this white. Uro's in. It did exile Shark Typhoon. I got more where that came from. 
I'm going to play Besaju out as a land. I think mana is more important right now than removing artifacts. Though these vials are getting to a, a spooky level. Filing in a 2, we know about the reality chip. If they try to equip, I'm going to bind the recruiter. Because I was going to bind recruiter anyway if they tried to flicker it. Leyline bind that. No equip, no flicker, no combat. Rest in peace. Okay. Uh, this is uh, many opponents who brought in Graveyard Hate against me. I think Rest in Peace makes a lot more sense than does Leyline of the Void. Because you don't have to mulligan for Rest in Peace, you just draw it at some point, and it doesn't mess up your range of capable hands. I'm just going to try to get this game over with. They got one card in hand, it's Yorion. That's fine with me. Attack with my cards. Umizawa's Jete can kill Solitude if they want to use it that way. Looks like they do. That's alright, big Uro causing trouble. Dress down, Bricks Yorian. Okay, I think I'm just going to pass here. Monarch up to seven cards. Oh no. I think, oh no, their last card in hand is Yoria, and this is a bait vial, unless I've lost track of something. Yeah, that was just a, that was a nothing vial. Either vial gamers, by the way, you want to be activating your vials even when you don't have anything. Just don't let your opponent know that if you're tapping your vial, it's because you have something. Lorian revealed, wow, that's a big one. I will force of will that on the hard cast. They can still vial in Yorian, but Yorian doesn't even have anything good to flicker. All it can do is reset Aether Vials, which is not necessarily a thing you want to do. I'm going to attack with Uro first. That puts extra cards in my hand to brainstorm with. Not putting lands in. I have enough of those. I'm not even sure if I have fetchables left, and I'm just going to play fast and not bother looking up if it's true or not. Okay, put back these fetch lands, and I will test if there's a fetchable. There is not. That's fine. Clear the top of the deck anyway. And Beanstalk, another fetch land. I can Leyline Bind the rest in peace or just discard lands and not care. It's the land being in play is probably worth more than just discarding it for no reason. Okay, they're violing here. It's Yorian. I'm not even going to dress it down because I don't care. Like, what are they going to do? Exile their, their vial? Yeah, just no action. There's Yorian. I'm going to Leyline Bind Yorion right now before they can draw Caracas and get into a frustrating loop that will be hard for me to beat. And my cleanup step, I'll discard the Replenish. I'm now under five minutes on my clock, but they're done on board and I have Force of Will in my hand. Yeah, they scooped it. All right, a four and one result, defeating lots of different decks with good old Up the Beanstalk Shark Typhoon, the classic pairing. Honestly, like we've seen decks that play a bunch of different engines. Even just earlier this week, I played a deck that just had like Questing Druid, the One Ring, Fourth Era Legus, Up the Beanstalk, and Uro in it. And it's just kind of, if we think of Shark Typhoon plus Hall of Heliod as just another engine that we've made room for instead of something like the One Ring or Fourth Era Legus, this makes sense conceptually. It might be cuter than it needs to be with the Replenish, but uh, Pernicious Deed was actually good. Like not just LOL, we get to play Pernicious Deed, but it was actually really good. It is well positioned in the format, and getting it in the main deck and in a position where you can loop it is really cool. There's decks that can't beat a looping dress down. Uh, there, anyone who fights over a Leyline Binding or Besaju's one or something, you get it back. All of Heliod is a serious engine that has kind of been lost to time in all the cool engines we've gotten in the last few years, but don't sleep on this. This is still here. Shark Typhoon's still legal. And this was a lot of fun. King of the Depths, thank you for the deck. This was Shark Beans. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, check out the Patreon, and I'll see you next time.